Wheat Chex, Rice Chex, and Good Hot Ralston present Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! <laughs> In today's transcribed adventure, Buzz and Happy have descended into a canyon on Venus to rescue a wounded space pilot. As they reach the injured man, a flash flood roars down the river, piling water up behind the dam above them. We've got to get him out of here quickly, Happy. The water's rising fast. Once we get him to the ledge, we shouldn't have any trouble carrying him to the top. It's a landslide. Press close to the dam. Keep your head down. And rockets. That was close. Hey, we got to get him up the pass. There may be another landslide. Commander, look up there. Most of the ledge is swept away. We're trapped. We'll be back in just a moment with today's Space Patrol story, The Mysterious Meteor. <laughs> Do you hear that, gang? That's the Terra Express train trying to get up speed on ordinary fuel. Not very speedy, is it? But now listen to that same train with super fuel in its tank. Yes, sir, that train's really traveling now because it's supercharged with super fuel. And, gang, without a good breakfast, you can't go very fast either. But with super fuel in your tank, you're supercharged. Here's how Buzz Corey gets up ahead of steam in the morning. He has a good breakfast with rice checks or wheat checks, the super cereals that help to supercharge you. For taste, they're terrific. And for size, they're perfect. Because they both have that modern bite size design. So, gang, get off to a quick start in the morning the way Buzz Corey does. Get supercharged. Just eat a good breakfast with the checkerboard super cereals. And get them today in the red and white checkerboard packages. Rice checks, wheat checks. One of the 30th century's greatest achievements has been the transformation of barren desert areas on the planet Earth into rich, fertile farmlands. Buzz Happy and Major Robertson are in one of those regions now, completing inspection of a new spaceport at the Arizona city of New Arcadia, center of a thriving agricultural district. While Robbie is finishing up a few details in the city, Buzz and Happy have taken a surface car for a drive out in the country. Commander, look at that, another meteor. Must be fairly low on the atmosphere. Hey, it must be a whopper, too. Wow, did you see that? It got so hot it exploded. And what a flash. It lit up the whole countryside. Quite a show. I never saw one like that before. Oh, look, there's another one. Well, the Earth must be passing through a meteor shower. Hey, it looks like it's coming right at us. Well, when this one explodes, it ought to make quite a display. It better explode pretty quick before it hits. Hey, Commander, it, it looks like it's headed right for the city. Commander, it hit. It landed right in New Arcadia. Well, they're pretty deceptive, Happy. It could have struck several miles beyond. We'd better get into town. If it did land there, it'd be a terrible catastrophe. Getting close, Commander. There's a whole area roped off up there. And the people are jammed around it. Well, we'll have to stop here and get out, Happy. We can't get through the crowd with this surface car. Hey, look. There's Major Robertson. Commander, I'm glad you're here. What happened, Robbie? A meteor landed right in the middle of the park. Anybody hurt? No, by a lucky chance. But a few people got showered with dirt, and a couple of hundred got the scare of their lives. Well, how big is the meteor? That's hard to tell. Dug a crater about 20 yards wide. Meteors way down the bottom of a deeper pit, glowing and red hot. Let's get through this crowd and have a look. Right, Commander. All right, make way, please. Space patrol coming through. What a crowd. Now there she is. It looks like a huge red eye. We don't know how large it really is. Part of it's buried by the dirt that fell back into the pit. Look at the size of the crater, Robbie. A miracle that landed where it did. A very lucky miracle. Now they're bringing up the uh, Tomo power shovel now. Well, aren't they going to wait until it cools off before they try to pull it out? 
Professor King wants to encourage her to make some tests. Professor King? Yes, sir. Professor James King, the meteorite expert. Hold that right there. Hold that. That's the professor shouting at the shovel operator. Professor King's been lecturing at the university here. Oh, I recognize him now. I met him a couple of years ago on Mercury. Well, apparently he's seen you. Here he comes. Commander Corey, isn't this most fortunate? Well, hello, Professor. Yes, it is fortunate. It could have been a terrible calamity. Exactly. If I had followed my usual custom, I would have been home in my study. But something urged me to go for a stroll. And I was only half a block from the park when this green streak roared out of the sky. I was thinking it might have killed someone. Uh, That would have been tragic, of course. But think of it. A rare meteor falling right at my feet, so to speak. Uh, Commander, uh, do I have your permission to test it? Of course. Uh, Thank you. I already examined it for radioactivity. How does it test? It's rather high, but not unusually so for an object that has spent millions of years in outer space. It's not dangerous, then? Oh, no, no, except that... Right now, it's rather hot from the friction of the atmosphere. Uh, The shovel operator is going to scoop away some of the dirt so I can check its size. Would you care to watch? Of course, Professor King. Oh, by the way, this is Cadet Happy. How do you do, sir? Glad to know you, Cadet. Uh, Your first meteor? Well, not quite. Happy's had quite a few experiences with meteors in space. Oh, of course, of course. Now, here comes the first group. Get back! The meteor exploded. No, it didn't. It's still glowing. Yeah, but look at the shovel. I mean, look where it was. The huge scoop is gone. The cables are just hanging there. What could have caused it, Professor? I don't know, Commander. The meteor is hot, but not hot enough to melt a steel shovel. Uh, to say nothing... ...and hit by the hot metal. Professor, you'd better leave that meteor alone until we get this crowd cleared away. Uh, yes, Commander, you're right. Robbie, have the local patrol keep everybody out of the park except the professor and men on official duty. Yes, sir. Uh, professor, I suggest you get an endurium scoop on that power shovel. you better wait till that meteor cools off a little more. Good suggestions, Commander. I'll follow them. Uh, Robbie, put a guard around the crater. I don't know what we've got here, but this is no ordinary meteor. It's going to be a hot day, Commander. Yes, but it was cool last night. I hope the meteor has lost most of its heat. Oh, I see Professor King is already at the crater. Yeah, with his power shovel and a lot of paraphernalia, it seems. Uh, good morning, Commander. Good morning, Professor. Well, I made a few tests. What did you find out? Uh, the object has cooled considerably, although it's far too hot to touch. Well, I wouldn't advise touching it at all till we know a lot more about it. I managed to make a spectrographic analysis of it. It seems to be of ordinary meteorite composition, uh, chiefly iron and nickel. Uh, The colors show a fair percentage of cobalt, copper, magnesium, and the common gases. Did you find anything to account for what happened to the steel scoop? No, no, young man. Uh, There were no unusual elements present. At least, none have shown up. Uh, Commander... I'd like to dig that meteor out and have it shipped to Terra for a thorough test. It might be a pretty heavy load for a spaceship. Oh, I don't think so. I was able to make some magnetic detection tests. There isn't much more of it underground. It should only weigh about uh, 500 pounds. Well, hand me that case, Happy. Before we start that endurium shovel, Professor, let's make a few simple tests. What kind of tests? We saw what happened to that hard steel last night, so I brought a few small samples of different metals... I thought we might toss them down on the meteor and see what would happen. Excellent idea. Let's go down into the crater a little farther. Fine. Well, not too close, Happy. We can hit it from here. Yes, sir. Now, here's a piece of steel. Try that first. Right, Commander. I hope my aim is good. It's gone. Vanished. Why, that fragment disintegrated. Yes. From here... Looks like it chipped a piece out of the meteorite. What'll we try next? Here's a lump of nickel, Happy. Okay. Smoke and rockets, that's gone too. Incredible. Well, Commander, if it destroys everything it touches, it well, why doesn't it just sink into the ground? Apparently it doesn't disintegrate soil. Now try this piece of endurium. All right, sir. Hey. Nothing happened. The endurium is just lying there on top of the meteor. Well, well. Uh, now, at least we know we can dig the meteor out with an endurium shovel. Yes, but don't forget, 
If you're going to move that object, it'll have to be packed in an endurium box. That's right. Well, we'll uh, need a box about three feet thick on each side, uh, perhaps a little thicker, just to be sure. Good idea. Oh, I can hardly wait to get it to my laboratory on Terra so that expensive tests can be made. Well, you better not try it with any expensive instruments. Mm, it's going to be a difficult object to handle, all right. Professor, we'll leave you now. Happy and I have got to get back to the local Space Patrol headquarters and clean up a few details. All right, Commander. Uh, thank you both for your help. I'll have one of my men get a truck and an endurium crate. Professor, I'd like to see you at Space Patrol headquarters before you blast off. Commander. Come in, Professor. Oh, I'll get you a chair, Professor Cage. <clears throat> I hope I'm not interrupting anything. No, not at all. Won't you sit down? <clears throat> Have any trouble with your metal-eating monster? No, it's packed in an endurium crate, with another ordinary crate around that. And it is now at the new Arcadia spaceport. So you're ready to go to Terra and solve the mystery? Commander, I think I have already solved it. Do you know what makes it destroy steel and nickel? Well, that meteorite will destroy any substance that it contains within itself. But how? Other meteors don't do that. Well, Dr. Rawlins and I have come to the same conclusion. We believe this meteor is matter in reverse. Matter in reverse? Yes. Uh, matter entirely foreign to our part of the universe. It may have come originally from a galaxy millions of light years away, where matter is formed in an entirely different way. But you said it appears to be iron and nickel and other substances with which we're familiar. Yes, uh, that's how it appears. But the atomic structure of each element is, is in exact reverse. Matter in our solar system has atoms with negatively charged electrons whirling around a positive nucleus. And this meteor has a negative nucleus with positive electrons. Exactly. For years, scientists have speculated about the possibility of such matter. Now we know it exists. Perhaps whole galaxies are made of it. But I still don't see why it destroys other metals. Well, that's only half of the story, Cadet. Part of the meteor is destroyed, too, in another form of atomic explosion. The two forms of matter cancel each other out. They neutralize each other. Precisely. Atom for atom. Uh, Commander, if we can learn to duplicate that process, we're on the threshold of a new era. Excuse me, Commander. Oh, Major Robertson. Uh, yes, Robbie? I'm glad the professor is here, sir. There's been a mix-up at the spaceport. That meteor was put aboard the wrong spaceship. What? Well, there's nothing to be upset about. Freight dispatcher traced it. It's aboard a cargo ship carrying mining equipment to Venus. Hey, Commander, we have to overtake that ship. I know, Professor. Robbie, if that meteor should come in contact with a large body of iron or steel, such as a building, it would cause an explosion that would kill or injure everyone around it. We'll be back with Space Patrol in just a moment. Gang, here's the story of a cosmic surface car in trouble. Listen. The trouble, it's got nothing to go on but ordinary fuel. But you hear that? The driver's filling up the tank with some super fuel. Something's going to happen now. Boy, that cosmic surface car is really roaring. That's because it's supercharged with super fuel. And the same is true with you, gang. What happens when you don't have a good breakfast? You're just a putt-putt. But when you fill up your tank with super fuel, man, you're supercharged. Here's how Buzz Corey does it. He eats a good breakfast with a checkerboard super cereal, rice checks, or wheat checks. Wait till you taste them, gang. Boy, are they good. Flavor galore in every crisp, bite-sized biscuit. So, gang, get going. Eat a good super cereal breakfast and get supercharged. Get the super cereals today. Rice checks, wheat checks. While Buzz, Happy, and Major Robertson were in Arizona on the planet Earth, a strange meteor hurtled out of the sky and buried itself in a city park. Attempts to dig it up resulted in steel digging tools being disintegrated in a blinding flash. So far, only the metal endurium has resisted the strange destructive force. 
It's now believed that the meteor is composed of matter with reversed electrical charges, matter from outer space that can destroy matter as it's known in our solar system. By mistake, the Endurian crate containing the meteor was put aboard the wrong ship. Right now, Buzz and Happy are aboard the Terra 5, racing to overtake the cargo ship carrying mining equipment and the strange meteor to Venus. Happy, keep the freighter in the view scope. Yes, Commander. Hey, if he's headed for Venus City, he's losing altitude pretty fast. That's been worrying me, Hap. I'll contact him again by space of phone. Menacori aboard Terra 5 calling cargo ship EC-349. Menacori to pilot Bill Craig aboard cargo ship EC-349. Craig here. Go ahead, Commander. I'm just wondering why you're coming in so low. I wanted to tell you, but I've been too busy to call, Commander. I'm sure you know your business, but those Torlock Mountains aren't exactly anthills. You bet they aren't. Believe me, I'd enjoy being about three miles higher. Having trouble with your ship? Uh, yes, sir. I came into Venus atmosphere on automatic trajectory control, and the control's out of adjustment. Looks like I'm going to have to set down outside the city somewhere on repeller rain. You don't sound very worried. Should I be? Well, you know your ship. Commander, exactly what am I carrying aboard this ship? Why is everything so mysterious? I'll explain it later, Craig. I wish somebody would. All space control told me is that something was put aboard my ship by mistake you'd meet me at Venus City Spaceport and supervise its removal. We didn't want to cause you any undue alarm. The fact is, you've got something very dangerous aboard. Explosives? <laughs> Don't worry, I've hauled some pretty tickly stuff in my day. You've never hauled anything quite like what you have aboard now. Everything will be all right if you just set her down easy. Okay, Commander. Well, look, uh, right now I don't think I can get above that Torlock range. If I can get any power out of the rockets, I'll deflect a few degrees and head up the canyon. Wow, he must be in a spot. Do you have any rocket control at all? A little. Enough to maneuver between those mountains. All right, Craig. Good luck. We'll be watching. Corey out. I hope he can reach a broad level space to set her down. I hope he does, too, Hap. Keep an eye on him through the view scope. Yes, sir. Sir, why didn't you tell him he was hauling a wild meteor? No sense wasting time explaining. He knows he has a problem. Yeah, I guess you're right, sir. He made it, Commander. Yeah, he's headed up the canyon. I guess he's okay now. Let's hope so. Dropped way down, sir. He's losing altitude. Corey aboard Terra 5, calling Bill Craig. Craig here, go ahead. How are you doing? The canyon widens out into a valley beyond Crescent Dam. I think I'll be okay when I pass there. All right, Craig. When you find a good spot, ease her down carefully. Right, sir. Craig out. Well, he's pretty cool about it, I'll say that. He's a skilled spaceman, Happy. He's going to need all the skill he's got. There's the dam up ahead. He's getting awfully close to that canyon wall. Yeah. He isn't going to clear the dam by more than a few... He... He hit the side of the hill. The ship's skimming along that shoulder. If it'll only hold together. Smoke and rockets, Commander. I can't look. Did he hit the dam? Not quite. It's a bad crack up. It broke the hull open. It's hanging over a rock halfway down the side of the canyon. At least the meteor didn't explode. The seal on the endurium crate must have held fast. We'll set the ship down on that flat stretch on the other side of the dam and get to Craig as quickly as possible. Looks at that sky, there's an ammonia storm brewing. I hope it holds off until we get Craig. Hey, this climbing is no sense, Commander. This terrain is rough. A few more feet and we'll be even with the top of the dam. Anything yet, sir? I can see part of the wreckage from here, but no sign of Craig. Come on, Happy. We've got to hurry. I feel that wind. Wow, that storm is roaring down the canyon a mile a minute. You better work fast, Happy. <laughs> Commander, look. Some of the cargo spilled out of the ship and rolled down into the water. Yes. A lot of the crates have smashed open. Hey, I hope the meteor didn't roll into the water. That looks bad. The hull is smashed right near the pilot's compartment. I hope Craig is all right. Let's work our way down into the ship. Commander, look. Isn't that a man down there at the edge of the water? It's Craig. He must have been tossed out of the ship. He sees us. He's waving. He's hurt. Come on. Hurry. Watch your step. It's steep through here. Happy, there's a ledge that slopes right down to the dam. A couple of crates stopped there. Sir, it, it, it leads right up to that ladder on the dam near the gate. Now let's head for it. Lucky we trailed Craig into Venus instead of going on ahead to meet him at Venus City. All right. 
Hey, look at that water level. There must be a flash flood up the canyon. Smoking rockets. Nearly up to where Craig's lying. It's rising fast. You gotta get him out of there. Now take it easy climbing over that endurium crate, Happy. That's the meteor. Hey, the seal's broken. The meteor's part way out of the crate. Well, we're in luck. Fortunately, none of those pieces of machinery came in contact with it. All right, let's climb down the face of the dam. Watch that ladder. It's going to be slippery. Commander, we'll have you out of here in a few minutes, Craig. Here, Happy, help me lift him to his feet. That's my right leg. I didn't mind the ship crashing, but bouncing down the mountain like a rubber ball was pretty rough. Can you put any weight on that leg, Craig? I'll try it. I think I can make it. Oh, I'd put your arms over our shoulders. Rest most of your weight on us. How do we get him up over the dam, sir? Well, the tough part will be the ladder. From there on, we can work back up the ledge and zigzag to the top. Yeah. I figure I can make it with a boost now and then. All right. Start up the ladder. Okay. Uh, it's okay. I can make it. Look at that water. It's rising fast. A landslide. Press close to the dam. Keep your head down. Smoking rockets. That was close. Look at that. If you men hadn't come for me, I'd be buried under several tons of dirt right now. Let's get out of here. There could be another landslide. Commander, look up there. How are we going to get out? The landslide has swept away most of the ledge. He's right. We can get as high as a sluice gate, but from then on, it's... Sheer wall. Let's get up to what's left of the ledge. We'll be out of the water at least. All right, Craig, get on the ledge. Okay. All clear. Uh, go ahead, Happy. Uh, 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 all right, sir. Here, I'll give you a hand. Thanks. Uh, gee, look at the water now. It's halfway up the ladder. Yeah. And look back up the canyon. It's streaming down at big waves. Commander, do you think it'll come as high as the ledge? Look at the watermark of previous floods. It comes this high because of the sluice gate. Wow. Even if the water doesn't come over the ledge, we're stuck here. If that sluice gate were only open, I could go through the spillway to the other side of the dam. There's a ladder on that side, too. I saw it coming up. How can we get it open? No, we can't. The control machinery is at the top of the dam. It's operated by remote control from a station far down the valley. Say, maybe they'll open the gate. Uh, by that time, it won't do us any good. See that line painted ten feet over the gate? The water has to reach that level before the flood warning sounds. He's right, Happy. Looks like I led you fellows into a trap. I'd only managed to get the ship over the dam. What well, isn't your fault, Craig. Well, I suppose we might as well sit down on the crates... Relax. I'd be careful of my feet if I were you, Craig. Don't let the metal in your boot buckles hit that meteor. A meteor? What are you talking about? There's a meteor in that crate. That's what we were worried about. If certain metals touch it, they explode. Craig, get off that crate. Huh? But quickly, Happy. Give me a hand with that meteor. What do you mean, sir? Let's get this meteor rolling down the slope of the ledge. Into the water? No, toward the dam. If it gets up enough speed, it might crash into that sluice gate. Sure, but we'll be going fast enough to knock that gate out. Well, no, sir. We... Hey, Commander... That gate is solid steel. Exactly. Hey, solid steel, like the first power shovel scoop. Okay, Commander, I get it. Craig, get over behind that other crate. If this works, it's going to be quite an explosion. Uh, careful, Happy. Remove your cadet ring. Yes, sir. It'd be a pretty painful way to find if the meteor has platinum in it. Hey, this, this thing is sure hard to move. If we get it rolling, it won't be so bad. At least it's lighter here on Venus than it was on Earth. Watch your feet. We've got it rolling, sir. Uh, quickly now. Get behind the endurium crate. Hope it doesn't wobble off into the water. Craig, keep your head down. Commander, it worked. There's a great big hole in the sluice gate. Come on, let's get off this ledge into the spillway. Yeah, let's get through before the water does. Hey, Commander, can you see through the dam to the valley? There's our ship. Now, that's a beautiful sight. Well, Commander, what about Professor King? What's he going to say? I'm afraid the professor will have to be content with telling another story about the big one that got away. An exciting preview of next week's thrilling Space Patrol adventure in just a moment.
But first, gang, here's something that's more fun than anything you ever owned. Something that rates as the biggest value we have ever offered. Something new, different, exciting. I'm speaking of that wonderful new thrill, Space Patrol Space Binoculars. I call it a wonderful new thrill because this amazing piece of Space Patrol equipment makes it possible for you to see houses, buildings, cars, and people way off in the distance. Yes, sir, when you look through your Space Patrol Space Binoculars, you can see what's going on blocks and blocks away. And when you look through your Space Binoculars, you don't even have to hold them. No, sir, they have a strong elastic band that holds them snugly to your eyes. Make you look like somebody from outer space, because when you wear your binoculars, they stand out from your eyes a full three and a half inches. Now, that's right. I'm not talking about flimsy little goggles or a mask. I'm talking about real, honest-to-goodness, four-power binoculars with four pure Lucite lenses. The real McCoy, in other words. Real binoculars. They're made of solid black plastic, and they have a bright red leather-like trimming that makes them look terrific. Overall, space binoculars are five inches wide, five inches long. And boy, oh boy, the fun you can have with them. You can see who's coming up the street. You can read signs way off in the distance. You can spot planes in the sky. And you can name the kinds of cars you see blocks and blocks away. And hey, when you look through the other end of your space binoculars, they smallify. Yes, sir, they do the opposite. Instead of making far-off things look close, they work the other way around. They make close things look far away. Lots of fun. Now, gang, to get a pair of these space binoculars, a pair exactly like Buzz Corey wears, do this. And, boy, you better do it quick because this offer soon ends. Just buy a box of Instant Ralston. Then, with your name and address, send 25 cents in coin and an Instant Ralston box top to Space Patrol, Box 686. St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in the USA and may be withdrawn at any time. Gang, if you don't think your space binoculars are tops, send them back and we'll return your money. The address again, Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are on the third moon of Jupiter in their spacesuits, attempting to pull Major Robertson out of a crevice into which he's fallen. Buzz has lowered Happy into the crevice where thousands of beetle-like insects are swarming, impervious to the cold and lack of atmosphere. Lower me a couple more feet, sir. Talk on these bugs. That's it, sir. Loop the rope under the Major's arms, Happy. Just a minute, sir. Until they brush off some of these insects. Some of them just won't brush off. They're awful. They're on my suit, too. Yes, and all over the Major's. Commander! They're eating through our spacesuits. We've got to get the Major out of there and get back to the ship. If these insects puncture our suits, we're finished. Be sure to be with us next Saturday for the exciting story, The Moon Beetles, when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again bring you Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol. <laughs> space Patrol, an original Mike Moser production starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston and directed by Larry Robertson. <laughs> Other players were Norman Jolly, Ken Mayer, and Bela Kovach. Dick Tufel speaking. <laughs> now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present the new exciting Space Patrol. <laughs> Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol story on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. Space Patrol comes to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network. <laughs>